Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about the Spanish horror film Veronica, which stars Sandra Escancina and is directed by Paco Plaza, who also directed the Rec films, which is the Spanish version of what Quarantine was based off of. So the story of Veronica is that it's based on a 1991 police report, uh, and it essentially centers around this young girl, Veronica, uh, who's a teenage girl who takes care of her three younger siblings uh, while her mom works. And so one day during this eclipse, uh, she decides to, with a couple of her friends, break out a Ouija board, which is never a good thing to do, and essentially havoc ensues. Uh, she gets sort of connected with this spirit while trying to speak with her dad, and it just does not end well for her. Now, before seeing this movie, I did watch the trailer. Um, I did know that it was a Spanish film. Uh, based, You can figure that out based on the trailers with the subtitles and everything. Um, but it was dubbed as being like the scariest movie ever. Had this great hype behind it that a lot of people actually watched it. Um, ended up not being able to finish it. A good majority of them, in fact, only like two or three people were able to finish it. So I went into this expecting a super scary movie. Um, it was definitely a good movie, I will admit that, but these two facts of it being the scariest movie ever and people not being able to finish it because it was so scary is a bit overblown, but I will admit it is a good movie. So let's begin first of all with talking about the story. Now Veronica doesn't necessarily present anything new. Um, it follows actually a lot of the horror tropes that have been around for ages. Um, Ouija boards, haunting, sort of spiritual encounter type of things. Um, these sort of things that certain people can see, others can't. Various tropes like that are definitely followed in Veronica. However, I feel like there are other elements in the way that's directed and presented that actually made it feel kind of refreshing and new at the same time. Um, a lot of the elements kind of felt along the same lines of The Conjuring, which I'm definitely a big fan of, um, but they sort of twisted things. I really liked how they did the whole Ouija segment and her connecting with the spirits during an eclipse. That small, probably insignificant detail kind of added this supernatural element for me that I felt like added to why something paranormal like this would be happening. Uh, just something as insignificant of the details like an eclipse, it just brings some sort of weight to it that I feel like a lot of horror movies don't try and take that tiny little detail and just add it into the story. Yeah, it might not be the most interesting thing in the planet, but again, it adds that sort of paranormal, supernatural element that really brings these darkness elements and the way it's sort of presented in the story definitely adds to it, and I really like that. As for the acting, I really think that this movie was pretty well acted all throughout. Um, there really was no person that was really slacking for me. I really like the kids in this movie, um, I, but I hands down think that Veronica herself, Sandra Escancina, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, did the best job. She actually is really, really good, and I hope that she does more stuff in the future. Um, she did a really great job portraying it. I think, again, in that sort of same vein is what, like, the Conjuring and Conjuring 2 did, where these kids are really good in these horror movies, and you just sort of want them to go on and do more stuff, because if they're this good in a horror movie when they're younger, they can probably have an awesome career later, at least I hope so. Um, but she hands down was the best performance, but throughout, there's really no complaints performance-wise for me. But I definitely think that one of the most intriguing things about the entire movie was the directing and editing. There are a couple of scenes that for the most part of the movie, it's pretty standard horror movie stuff. There's really not anything significant happening with the camera or editing work, but there are certain scenes that are actually really, really cool. Um, for instance, the best examples I can give of this, um, there's one scene where Veronica's sort of laying in bed and sort of having like this nightmare sequence type of thing, but then she wakes up and then walks goods up out of her bed and goes down a hall, but the way that it's shot... It sort of flows as if she was standing and sleeping at the same time and then just sort of walks out into the hall. It's actually a really cool segment. Um, it only happens in about a second and a half, so you kind of have to watch for it. But it's definitely something that catches your eye visually. Another great scene is um, when Veronica has to go and see her friend. So she's walking through town, and these Ouija boards come with like these occult books, which you can sort of read and find out all these paranormal things. And as she's going to, to her friend's house, like, the pavement that she's walking on is, like, the occult books and, like, texts. I don't know why. I just really thought that that was kind of a visually interesting um, direction to go with and, like, editing-wise. I don't know why it was just something cool. Like, she was going through the book but also going to her friend's house at the same time. 
I'm not really sure what it was about it. It just looked kind of cool and not just like this boring shot of a girl walking. Although there were a couple sequences of that when she's going to her friend's house. But it just added some flavor to it. Something interesting to watch other than her just quickly walking to her friend's house. And I think the director really knows how to use the camera in a lot of uh, senses. Especially since he directed the rec films. Which again, Quarantine is based off of. Um, so he really knows how to play with the camera. That one was more handheld. This one is more like, um, just standard camera shots, but he really took that leap editing wise. And I think that that really was what brought a whole lot of visual intrigue to the film overall. So although Veronica wasn't anything surprisingly new or innovative, um, and it didn't live up to that hype of being the scariest movie ever, just sort of having that intrigue of being based on a true story, kind of like that Amityville horror, it's kind of like that conjuring sort of elements where these paranormal things sort of happen, and this is actually based on a police report that a detective witnessed, so that brings a little bit more intrigue to it. Um, Although it doesn't necessarily bring a whole lot new to the table, I think it had a great story. I think it had good performances, and I really was interested in the movie. Um, it didn't necessarily have that super, super horror type of film to it. It was sort of that tolerable horror, if that makes any sense. It doesn't necessarily go above and beyond trying like gross you out with gore or like super scary moments, although it does have scary moments and like suspense and jump scares. It doesn't necessarily feel like the standard where it's constantly being thrown at you. You can kind of relax and sort of and go along with this character through the story. And for a lot of those reasons, I actually really like Veronica. And for that reason, the overall grade that I have to give Veronica is a B plus. So guys, those are my thoughts on Veronica. Like I said, it is now streaming on Netflix. You can go check it out now. Uh, I highly recommend watching it. It's definitely a pretty good watch. Even if you're really not into horror or really into um, foreign films, uh, this one kind of is a blend of different things. And it's actually a really good watch and I highly recommend it. Uh, so definitely check it out if you haven't. If you have seen it, uh, make sure you let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Uh, but other than that, that's all I have for now. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.